anyway, um, so the... Uh, then it goes back. All right, so you have A, G. Now to get this... We're getting... This line, when we go to our D chord, we take the third of the chord and put it in the bass so we can get that note. So we get... Very pianistic thing to do, really. Then he goes back to his... Right? So... Uh, oh, this is great. I love this. He uses an F Lydian chord, okay? Sometimes you could you could e express an entire mode in just one chord. And okay. in the case of Lydian, you can. Because what you do is you take an F chord and this is kind of like uh, all right, well, the Lydian note is the raised fourth, okay? Okay. Now if I were to count an F scale, like natural F scale, one, re, mi, fa, one, two, three. Instead of using that note in the chord, I'm using this note. Okay. Now this is used a lot of times for humorous effect, like those are the Liddy notes. All right. Mm -hmm. Also, um, Danny Elfman used it a lot. I'm trying to think. Uh, there's another. Uh, oh, it's it hell's way back, but the Adams Family used to have some oh. dental music. They went. Sitcom music. <laughs> it, it can either be mysterious or humorous, right. depending on how the context is. But what he does here, Lennon has done this a, a few times, where he has this like love relationship between F to the B major chord, which are you can't think of two more further apart chords. Right. Okay. Some people could say this is a piece of tritone substitutions, which is possible because of their uh, the relationship between the two chords is a tritone distance. They're not sevenths though. Okay. In any case, what he does is he, he takes the melodic line on the B and then he takes it to the B chord, which is a beautiful Huh. It's pretty wild. That is a B7. Alright, so let me kind of bring that back again. It's like um, But instead, he creates more tension. Uh, he creates more tension by not resolving. All right. And finally, we're building and building, and we'll finally get it. Oh, is that the cuckoo cuckoo? Yeah, you know? yeah. And he's he's created the key of E here, or the root E. Yeah. But then it takes us back as the five chord to one, and we start the song over again. In A. In A, yeah. So this is this is like a really deep piece of music, huh. architecturally and otherwise. There's more surprises even. Okay. So let me let me take it through again from verse one to verse two. Okay. Actually, maybe even from the intro. <laughs>
So, um, let's see. We've got, <coughs> oh, we go back to the A section. And you add something new tagging to the A mm -hmm. section. Okay, we get this. Um, um, Again, he's going back to the blues. We have a one, a four, and a five he's playing with. That's, you know. What's the suspended? Chord? Yeah, good. You saw it. You heard that. Yeah. Ryan. So we go to a D chord, and he sings a G against the D. Uh -huh. Four? And he doesn't relax it. He goes back to A. Yeah, and he, he plays that for two bars? Yeah. 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 And actually, it's very cool. Huh. It's very cool. He does that, they do that in um, Baby You're a Rich Man, too, I think, something similar with a suspension. Uh. I, McCartney, uh, that's a kind of questionable thing to do. Um, there's, a, there's a few reasons for it, but, like, in my mind, it's, it's tricky. And McCartney and Lennon both experimented with that sound. And mm. I was always curious about that, because that's more like a, a thing that... Less, lesser less sorts would use? Yeah, exactly. Like yeah. all the bands in the 90s, for example. Yeah. Um, it, it thought occurred to me, uh, other songwriters who work, you mentioned The Who, you mentioned Peter Townsend. Uh, does Tom Petty work in major a lot or no? Does he Does he throw well, he in minor? He's a good balance between major and minor. Does he? Okay. And what he does, he stays strictly within the, the chords of the key. So he doesn't like mixed modes and things. He hardly does that. Yeah. He hardly does that. Yeah. Hmm. Then uh, another question back to this thing. <clears throat> um, and we're all surmising here, but there seems to be an awful lot of, <clears throat> besides guitar and bass and drums, there's a lot of instruments in this thing. Yeah. Or a yeah. lot of, uh, at least layers and tones, that oh, sort yeah, of thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff going on. Now, is, is that farmed out to, and like, we, of course, we think George Martin, but is that all, that sort of thing, that orchestration or whatever, is that farmed out to other people? The actual orchestration? Yeah. I think Martin was... Basically, they like, kept it kind of in house then. Yeah, pretty much. Like Martin was probably the guy. In fact, he was the guy that would call the musicians in. He he was he was connected up with the classical world, oh, okay. so he could get some of the top musicians and do that sort of work. And he was doing that early on with the Beatles, you know. But he was fully capable of writing that orchestration stuff himself. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He was. Uh, yeah, no, he was. He wasn't just the master mixologist. Oh no no no! Uh, let it be clear. He was George Martin was a trained academic academically trained musician of the highest level. I mean, he was no slouch. Yeah, okay. You know, he, he can compose for full orchestra, no problem. Oh, so, so he, was he was like a fifth, a real fifth Beatle, that sort of thing? No, there's no question about yeah. it. I, I, look, I mean, if you took Martin out of the mix, look what happened on Let It Be, you know, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, Spectre uh -huh. produced Let It Be. And, and it, was, it, was in, the, 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 it was insulting to McCartney. He was pissed off about it. No, it was meant to be that Martin was the was guy, their producer. Go to. He was the fifth Beatle. But anyway, let's get to. Um, so after the, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, after the. Um, B section, which is uh, and all we get is this a bunch of tingly sounds, tinkling noises. And then he iterates the intro two times, first with the cellos and then with vocals. So let's check that out. Really cool. And 
does the same trick with going up half the beat. Now, there, there's another change in, in the architecture. It suddenly adds another goo 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 joob thing in there. But here's the interesting thing is that that is, a, that is a foreshadowing of the big ending. Because at the ending he goes... And then, and then that's where this whole thing starts. Oh, really okay. cool stuff. All right, so How I'm long is this total, by the way? This, this is a long song. song. It's uh, four minutes forty seconds. Oh man! I mean, for the yeah. time, it was long. Um, when was, they, when they, was Hey Jude? Hey Jude was long. Hey Jude was over seven, but when oh. was it? Oh, when was it? Yeah. Was hey it Jude? after this? Yeah, it's it was after, after this. this. We're coming close. We're coming close. Yeah. It's like probably Hey Jude is. Hey Jude was summer of '68. Was it? Yeah. So then, where? Wow, summer of 68. I remember it in Long Island, cruising around. All right, so they must have released this six months after Peppers, because it really is a toss-off album. It's oh. mostly singles. That, okay. You know, like, we did Strawberry Fields and, and yeah. uh, Penny Lane. That's on this record. Mm -hmm. There's only a few, like, extra things. I mean, this was a single. This wasn't an album cut. Did this get lots of radio playing? I remember hearing it on the radio. Did you? <laughs> because, it. I mean, the claim is that Hey Jude was sort of the, the first extra-long really popular top 40 a long number I yeah, guess yeah. long form where they were used to do the two minute 15 seconds well thing. they're still doing long I mean on peppers they they broke that rule and, yeah. you know like they did a long form on within you without you which is probably okay. about six is it okay um, but yeah like in terms of a single yeah. probably hey Jude see this was a b-side uh, oh okay so you'd get some airplay but it wasn't uh, I forget was the, with the a side of it, it might have been hello goodbye Huh. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's uh, let's take it to the the vamp out. seven notes in the scale and they're they're basically doing all seven notes of the scale and building a major chord on it. So F A G F E D C B A. Now let's see. G A B C D E F G. Alright. Uh and then A B C D E F. If you started, if you look at A as the root, right? Mm -hmm. And you took all the chords and put them in order, ascending A B C D E F G A, you'd get an Aeolian scale. All right. So, uh, in other words, just if we take A as the root, mm -hmm. all right. So an A Aeolian actually. It's really strange. It is following scale steps. And I actually did, years ago, I did research into this because I, I, I was a teenager, but I, I was, I noticed these wandering major chords and I thought, this is really kind of interesting stuff. Is there a key to it? Is there a way it works? Mm -hmm. 
See, because the blues is what opened the possibilities of this up, by the way. Huh. Um, you know, there was no classical reason for it, except the Impressionists said, okay, you're allowed to do parallel chords of any type just for the fun of it. Was but, this was this from sort of the basic blues sort of understanding of, you know, one, four, five, or and seven? That I mean, that was it minors were not sort of included in that early well, transformation? Well, the thing about major chords is, is I think like, I like to think of major as masculine and minor as feminine. And the interesting thing is, um, like, if you take a, a minor chord and place it against, well, let's put it this way, if you take a minor scale and place it against a major chord, mm -hmm. you'll get the blues, all right? Okay. And that, that works, but if you take a major scale and put it against a minor chord, it's yeah, horrifying. Right. It's the difference between seeing a man in women's clothes and a woman in men's clothes. In, in, in a sense, like, aesthetically, there's a difference. Like, I'd rather see a woman in men's clothes, personally, you know. Well, like, uh, and also what... To each his own, I guess. But um, um, minor keys and minor chords are much more, have much more depth and intrigue to them than, than male, <laughs> straightforward, oh, yeah, absolutely. boring... And when you think about it, remember I described about minor keys, how complex they can get? Right. Because of the, all the chromaticism, mm -hmm. because they've been tweaked. Um, that's another thing. Like, women tend to be much more complex than guys are. So I, I like the masculine-feminine yeah. analogy. And if you, if you take multiple minor chords and move them around in the same way, they sound kind of crappy. <laughs> Right. It's strange. There seems to be there's there's more muscle to the majors, yeah. In, in the, at least in this thing we're talking about anyway. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, what you want an effect on minor chords? The joke I always do, like in in movies, is you move a minor chord to its furthest distance. The furthest distance between any two notes is a tritone. Okay. Okay. It's not an octave. It's not anything bigger than an octave. It's a tritone, and I can prove it. Um, but in any case, if you take a minor chord. And then go the tritone distance from that minor chord, build one on that note, which is A, uh, A minor here, and then E flat minor here. You get that movie cliche with the uh, tremolo string. Oh. So it's an effect. It's, a, it's an extreme yeah. effect, but it, that's what it is. It's an effect, and it's not very musical. If you were to do it like a reggae song. Right sound horrible to do that. You yeah, know? but there, it, it, uh, it, it sound just the very sounds are build suspense. Yeah. You know, that sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, we have, uh, I just, I love this cycle for a number of reasons. First of all, <coughs> we're dealing with um, uh, four beats per chord, right? But we have seven chords, so we have seven bar lengths. So each time the cycle comes around, it's slightly skewed because we're used to hearing eight bar lengths. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, that's why I love this because when it's two, three, four, one, 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 two, Right, so that that that's a really <coughs> cool device, and I've experimented with stuff like that, like odd chord cycles, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so yeah, there's I am the Walrus. What a what a piece of music. Huh.